Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Just give me one or two minutes. This morning, I attended or watched the Mars of Father Suarez. Napakaganda yung message na sinabi ni Lord na sinabi din sa atin. Ang pinakamahalaga ay sinabi sa atin ni Lord do not let your hearts be troubled. There was a sign in Squatter Syria for three years. Ang mga ulkonokan mo ay 500 pesos. Pero sabi ko, hindi ako pumabayaan ni Lord. And I survived. So kung may natutunan mo na po sa Squatter Syria ay yung sinasabi ni Lord na yun, do not let your hearts be troubled. Ako maaala ka sa iyo. Kaya isa sa mga natalaan kong salita na hanggang ngayon ay hinapinakahawagan ko ay yung sinabi niya, Seek first the kingdom of God and all, all things to be done into you. Kaya yung missing is, do not let your hearts be troubled. Ay namukin ko yan sa isang salita. Mamahin natin natin Seek first the kingdom of God and all things should be added to you. Kaya kung meron ang gusto na huli natin sa araw na ito ay not only the words do not let your hearts be troubled sa ating Lord kundi unlad unahin natin namin ang Diyos. Kaya salamat sa Diyos hindi niya tayo It's so interesting, sabi ni Jesus, don't let your hearts be troubled. 
Ang tawag ng iba sa akin ay trouble banker. Kahit hindi ko gawin, nangyayari. What's so interesting, ang sabi ni Pope Francis sa mga pare, of sa world today, create a noise. If you're not creating a noise, there's something wrong in you and in your ministry. Sabi ni Father, sa ito sa Tagalog, kayong mga pare, huwag kayong mangitlog. Mga kung anong lumabas dyan, get out and sit and search those who are lost. Smell like sheep. Hindi ka nasa opisina lang. Nagbibilang ng koleksyon o nag-administer ng kung ano-ano. Pabayaan natin yan sa mga lay, mga katulad ninyo. Sabi niya, madumihan ka. Hanapin mo sila. Bakit? Siguro po Francis is coming from his experience in Latin America na ako ay naniniwala na mangyayari natin sa Pilipinas. Nung bumisita ron si Mother Teresa 20 years ago sa Latin America, na-scandalize si Mother Teresa kasi almost hundreds of thousands of Catholics nakiging born again and Protestants. Predominantly Catholic kasi sila. Sa bansa natin, we are predominantly Catholics. Ang mga Katoliko, ang mga nasa simbahan mayayabang, dominant kasi tayo, we are all Catholics. Marami nang napapapayaan. Minsan yung power struggle, masyadong marami legalistic, bawal ito, bawal ito, pinahihirapan ang mga tao. Mga lay, tumutulong na nga para mapabalik ang mga tao sa simbahan nalilito tuloy, nasasaktan, ayaw nang sumimba. Siguro doon nagaling si Pope Francis. Nagaling siya sa isang background kung saan hundreds of thousands of Catholics umaalis sa simbahan. Yun ang ikinakagamot niya. Kaya siya, ngayon hindi lang papa, too radical. Tama na muna nga yung protocol. Kaya nung po namin ko si Pope, walang protocol. Sabi ng pare, si Padre Ricky, kukwento kayo sa inyo maganda, si Padre Ricky, si Padre Jeff, nagkaka-crisis tuwing mamimit yan. Napakaloko, nagbabalay, sumisigaw, nagpapatamlay-tamlay. Isang araw, nagkaroon ng bagyo sa Rome. Sumulat kay Pope. Si Pope hands on. Dinilagay ni Padre Ricky ang kanyang telephone number. Tinawagan siya. Tapos nung nagpagkilala kay Ricky, What's your name? I'm Ricky Ignacio, the future Pope. <laughs> Natuwa ko sa kanya ang Pope. Nung dalaw niya ngayon, may pinakitang picture. Kasi alam ni Ricky na si Pope Francis mahilig ang puso nasa mahihirap. Ay walang may madalang picture si Ricky kung hindi yung picture na kasama ko. Kasi pumupunta siya sa iling, meron po tayo ng feeling program. Tsaka dito sa Paseo, kaya yung grupo ni Nadel nagpapakain niya. Tsaka dito sa May Veritas. Sabi daw ni Pope, sino ito? Ako. Ah, si Father Suarez, yun po ang may foundation sa Pilipinas. Ako po ang president ng Yul. Sabi daw ni Pope, I want to meet him. Yun po ang nangyari. Nung tinawag siya ni Pope, Sabi sa kanya ng mga gwardiya, nasa na inyong document? Nasa na inyong passport? Ang sabi daw ni niya sa gwardiya, sabi ni po, hindi na kailangan niya. Ibigay ko lang ang password 
No password, Ricky. <laughs> Tumawag ang gwardiya kay Ricky. Sabi daw, there is a guy here, no documents. Ricky, password. Bring him in. Kung pumasok lang siya, sama ni Poe, sabi daw ni Padre Ricky. Kasama ko na ang pare, si Padre Suarez. Sabi niya, You told me you want to meet him. Sabi ni Pope, but we need some arrangement. Binali ka ni Ricky, di ba sa document mo, sabi mo, hindi na kailangan ang protocol. Di ba sabi mo sa akin na nag-uusap tayo, your house is my house. You can come here anytime. So he is here, meet him soon. Sabi ni Pope, how soon? Very soon. Pero ang ginawa tayo ni Pope, sige nga, punta tayo. Nung pumunta po si Pope dito sa office, tinignan niyo, kasi world and uh, canonization nito eh, napakadaming tao, puno na. Ang ginawa daw ni Pope, in a less amount, um, salitang basta, or enough, full. In-erase, pinalita na, Father Fernando Suarez, Father Ricky Ignacio, yun namin po po si Pope. Mga kapatid, sinasabi nito. Sabihin na natin swerte lang. Sabihin na natin nagkataon lang. What a chance. One in a billion mangyayari sa buhay natin. But what I learned from this is, yun nga, don't let your hearts be troubled. Sabi ni Bishop, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything will be given unto you. Ako, itinuturing na healing priest. Pero ako sugatan din. Battered. Minsan iisipin ko, nag-heal ka na. Hila ka dito, hila ka noon. May mga benefactors kasi minsan nag-tutunin. Pagka nag-tunin, akala nga nila, pag-aari ka na. Kapilahin. Tapos pag hindi mo nang pagbigyan, masama ka. Yan ang crisis. Sometimes are always wrong. Pag may kasama kang babae, may bababae, may kasama kang lalaki, may lalalaki, may kasama kang matanda, matrona, pag may kasama kang bata, pito pahil. Sabi nga, wala namang magtatanggol sa amin dahil wala kami mother-in-law. So sa Diyos na lang kami aasa. Pero ang vindication sa huli, Pagka ito'y galing sa Diyos, perfect, perfect timing. Sabi nga, the picture says it all. Nung hinag ako ni Po, ang sabi ko po, sa puso ko, dahil po napakaraming naghahag sa akin, napakaraming gusto kumawak sa aking kamay, naniniwala na sila ay gagaling. Hindi naman paniniwala dahil ako may kapangyarihan. Pero ganyan gumalaw ang pananampalataya. This is how it works and this is how that operates. God will always use an instrument. And all of us can be God's instrument if we let ourselves be. And then I let myself be an instrument. Kasi 12 years ago, when I had this struggle on how to embrace and be open to this gift when my spiritual director told me, Fernando, this gift is not for you. This is for the people. Use it. Nung ginamit ko po ito, naging troublemaker na po ako. Dahil I'm stepping in foreign land. Alam ko sa church, napakalakas ng turf issue. Boundary ko ito, bawal pumasok. Hindi na ngayon nangyari yung ban ako dito, ban ako doon. Hindi ko makakalimutan no, 2005, when Toronto Cardinal wrote me a letter that I should leave the place in five days. The only reason he gave me in that letter was because I'm behaving like a chaplain, a position I should not embrace in layman's term. I'm praying with people in hospital, those who are sick without pain. 
kasi po ako ay ano man itong mga Pilipino malaki ang pananampalataya natin iba tayo gusto matouch hindi ko naman alam na may isang Pilipino pare isusumbong ako as a matter of fact kinakalaunan na may bigyan din nyo ng nanay ko sa Toronto. Ang pinagsasabi niya ngayon, kung hindi ko isinumpong si Father Suarez sa Cardinal, hindi yan sisikat sa Pilipinas. Pero nung ako po yung nirestriksyonan sa Toronto, it opens my ministry to the world. Kaya ako napabalik sa Pilipinas. Salamat sa Diyos. Noong pong nangyari yun, hindi ko alam ang aking gagawin. How would I survive this? Because at the early age of three years old in the priesthood, they threatened me to remove my faculty. Pero sabi nga, don't let your heart be troubled, believe in me. But I asked God for a sign. I said, God, please give me a sign that I can endure it. Ngayon ko lang i-reveal sa inyo. The reason I survived it, binaliwala ko to. Kasi that very evening that Father Jeff phoned me because we came all the way from France, from St. Cure of Dars. Nag-retreat po kami doon ng mga panay. And then we went to Rome. Sabi ni Father Jeff, do you know that you have no more faculty? Hindi na po ako nakatulog. That time, I asked the Blessed Virgin Mary for a sign. And you know what happened? Habang ako'y natutulog, totoo pong nagsashower ang roses. Napaliputan ako ng roses. Bumango ang room na kinaturo ko na ito. And from then on, sabi ko, I will survive it. Yun nga. Na-survive it. Ang pinakamatindi pa na nangyari sa amin pagkapari was last March when they tried to dem demolish me. Morally. Hindi nyo siguro alam ang feeling na pagka ikaw yung ginawang national issue at sinabi ang bako mo, you, have, you are helpless. Parang tuwing kumakikita ang tao nung iniisip ko lahat ang mga ito nakabasa ng dyaryo. Lahat ng mga ito iniisip ang masama sa akin. Kahit sabihin na natin hindi ganyan ang pag-iisip mo. And I was so traumatized. I was terrorized. Particularly by church authorities. Ang nasa isip ko lang, tuloy ko sila mamimit. Hindi depende ko ang sarili ko. Sasabihin ko, hindi naman ako nangungurakot. Sasabihin ko, nandito ang pera. Sasabihin ko, may SGB kami. Sasabihin ko, approve ito ng tinatawag na PCNC. Sasabihin ko, mayroon kami ng board of directors. Sasabihin ko, wala po akong ginagawang masama. Yun po lagi ang nasa isip ko. So, humingi na naman ako ng sign. Lord, please vindicate me and give me a sign that ay kakayanin ko to. Ito nga po. April 24, pinatawag ako ni Po, and he had me. And that picture says it all. This picture is a picture of consolation, affirmation, and healing. Tama-tama ang sinasabi sa Biblia. Don't let your hearts be troubled. So sa mga nandito, hindi may iiwasan ang problema. Sa mga normal na tao, we can at least be happy. Kahit pa ano ang gawin mo, may pupula at pupula sa iyo. But what is important is you know yourself. You know that you are what you are in the eyes of God. No more, no less. And how can we know ourselves? And how can we know God? In the second reading from the book of Peter, he said, Go close to Him. Come to Jesus. And whatever you ask in His name, He will give it to you because He is the way, the truth, and the life in the book of John. And in doing so, and in knowing all these words of consolations that we can hold on to, all the promises of Jesus, everything that's been written in the scripture, it's all true. 
that we need a solid. We need a, a daily encounter with God that will solidify our faith in Him. Pagka tumibay ang ating palatampalataya, ang answer niyo, sabi nga ni Lisha Palang, ang 500 ko na daladala dito sa ating pagpunta sa squatter area, dito sa silang kabide, yung mga sakit ninyo, yung mga away ninyo. Ang Diyos ang bahala. According to the studies, 93% ng ating worries or 97% ng mga worries natin hindi totoo. 3% lang ang, ang totoo sa mga ipinag-aalala natin. So please do not consume. Do not be overwhelmed. And do not waste your energy sa pag-aalala. And how can we not waste our energy as a person of tayo hindi mag-aalala? Pope Francis is saying, always renew your personal encounter with Jesus and you will find joy in Him. You will find joy in Him. Twelve years na po akong pare at masasabi ko pa rin, after na napakaraming pinagdaanan, my priesthood had been threatened. The very reason I left Canada, Padre Gio Rose, Bishop Alan Rose, dahil my priesthood is at stake, I have to save my priesthood. That's the only way, because I know Satan wants me to lead the priesthood. And I don't want to lead the priesthood. Why? Because I believe it's my calling. And I'm so happy being a priest. Yung iba lang hindi masaya na ako'y pare. Problema na yun na yun. Hindi nila mag-beg na mag-i-enjoy ako kasama ninyo. Dahil ako'y pare. Marami dyan, dalawang bagay ang ayaw nilang ipagawa. I'm talking about turf issue. Mga obispo, ito mga bagay ang ayaw nilang ipagawa. Pwede ako sila, pwede ako pumunta sa diocese nila, pero hindi ako pwede magmisa at hindi ako pwede mag-heal. Pwede ako kumain, pwede ako maglaro ng penis. Pero huwag kang magmimisa, huwag kang mag-heal. Bawal yan. They're playing gods. Bahala na ito sa kanila because we know we have one God, Jesus. But we cannot stop the movement of the Spirit. We cannot stop the work of God. Bishop Palan in his introduction, he commissioned me, Fernando, your mission, your parish is the world. And I'm only accountable to Him. Wala akong pakailam sa akin ang ibang obispo dahil meron akong bishop protector na hinahayaan ako na maggamot kahit sa ang parte ng mundo. Kung sino man ang magsasabi sa akin na hindi ko pwedeng gawin yun, ang protector ko with the virtue of him being a bishop and for him and the virtue of the collegiality of the mission participating in the fullness of the priesthood, siya po ang nag-commission sa akin. Go. Same word coming from the Pope. Go for the kingdom of God. Salamat sa paniniwala. Salamat sa pananalangin. Salamat sa pagdano. Kapunod ng sinabi ni po, pagdasal na lang ako. But one thing I learned and I appreciate some of persecutions. It's good for my pride. That keeps me grounded. 
keeps me the same and keeps me faithful. May God bless you all. last week or 10 days or so, and look, you're all here. You really are a family, and you're all here because of your love for Father Fernandez. As you know, the reason we're here is the 12th anniversary of his ordination. Uh, I've been at every one of his ordinations, uh, celebration, uh, everywhere, and they're always like this, all the time. And, um, Right when I, we first met in Canada, I was the, uh, we met because I was the ping pong champion in my seminary in, in uh, Toronto. And we met with his seminary, he was only the runner up, he came in second in his. So I didn't meet him yet, but I played their champion, and I beat him, so oh, I'm doing pretty good. So then he, the runner up, said, oh, I'll challenge you. Always second place, I could beat him, no problem. So I played him, of course I lost. And uh, <coughs> losing ever since. But uh, in ping pong, but we met and we talked after that. And uh, that was back in January 1997. And I was just made a deacon and I was ordained a priest a few months later. And after that, first I had invited him to join our seminary. I was so shocked, I did, our community at the time in Canada. And I was so shocked I did that because for Six years before that, I never asked any other seminarian to join our community. Why? Because I don't like to steal sheep from other places. But I, for some reason, I said it to him. Even I was surprised it came out of my mouth. I said, you come and join our community, the Companions of the Cross at the time. And he said, oh no, no, I'm happy where I'm at. And uh, sure enough, uh, a few months later, oh, we have a next seminarian here. There he is, he's ready. So a few months later, he joined our community, and uh, we became friends. And in his second year, I was actually his superior, and he was under me. Wow, <laughs> surprising. Some people say, why is Father Fernandez doing so well and he's so fruitful? Well, you can point back to when I was his formator for us nine months. <laughs> shortly after that that I went to the Philippines and he brought me, he asked me to come and I visited and from then on I fell in love with the Philippines and I wanted to serve him. I keep saying it's the best country in the whole world. He might, he might be shocked at that. Uh, not because of your wonderful politics, <laughs> not because of your um, cleanliness in your country, uh, but it's the heart of the Filipino, which is really, you can't beat that in any other country. Really. And Father Fernando is one example of someone who's in, trying to incarnate what is in the heart of most Filipinos. Um, they have a great love for one another. And you love family, and you love to be together. But also because of that, you also tear one another down. You don't like to see anyone do well. If someone does well, they tear them down. And uh, that's very interesting. In Canada, that would never happen. People don't care about others so much. They take care of themselves. But here, you, everybody knows everything. You want to know what's going on? You ask the security guards and the 
All the people who are serving, they know more than everybody else. It's amazing, I couldn't believe it. But he has had a, he has a great love. And I remember in the first year in the community in our, what we were in, and we were just having lunch, and this is how I came to know him at first. And there was a visitor from his old seminary came. Yeah, I don't think he even knows the story. And uh, at the end, when we were in the kitchen, she gave him a hundred dollars, Canadian. That's four thousand pesos. And uh, and I saw her give it to him just to help him with his studies. And I know he's not receiving anything. There's only a seminarian at that time, and he had nothing either. And uh, so he left. <clears throat> not even two minutes after they left. Another brother seminary came into the kitchen and he asked, Father Fender, can I talk to you? And they were talking in the corner of the kitchen and I was listening. And uh, he was asking for help, if he could help him. For some reason, he asked him. And he no sooner, after the end of that, he gave the hundred dollars immediately to this seminary. And I was like, oh my goodness. He, he had nothing. He received this hundred dollars and he gave it away right away. And he's been like that ever since. Literally, he, uh, he's so generous, and that's why God is blessing him. You know, uh, how do you know someone is fruitful? The scripture says, you know them by their fruit. And you're a sign of the fruit of what he's doing. Your love for God, and you're able to see he's so selfless. And that's one thing I know. See, he's very selfless, starting from that story. The children of Mary who are here, they're probably the only other ones who know him longer than I do, who are here, or, or his mother, maybe she knows him more than I do, since day one, but uh, they know him he's like, he hasn't changed, he's the same since the beginning, since I met him, and he, he has a great love for others, and that's what's made him so successful, he's so, so selfless, and he has a great love for the poor. Then the poor. This is why we are in Ealing Island. I was stationed there for the last three years until I got sick four times and put in the hospital until the bishop said, you're banned from going to Ealing because I was in the hospital again. So anyway, I won't go there anymore. But, but uh, it's a place where we have no electricity until now. We're still working on, there's no roads, there's no electricity, no running water, no, but we built our seminary due to a number of generous donors that help. And we have our place of formation with the poor. And this is the heart of Father Fernando. That's where he wants to be. That's where his love is. That's where he talks about. He's always doing something new. He's always doing something, not something coming out of his mind, but being inspired by God. Because of it's very fruit. People are coming. Unless the seed dies, it remains just the seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. His life has been one of dying. He's been persecuted from the first day I met him. He was in our seminary after the first year, on probation, first year, in our community. First year. All his other seminarians who were with him in his batch, they all went through. But in the end, he was the only one ordained. They all left. So he's been, he, I've walked through all of that. But when it's, what scripture says, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for trial. Prepare yourself for trial. If you really want to serve the Lord, and this is what he's been doing, he's been trying to do. You know, this, remember the poor that we're ministering to, and he's seen them. One story, I met a lady in Elaine, and she was telling me as she's talking, she's a very old lady, she doesn't have any family left, and she said, how do you survive? And she says, what I do, when I drink my water, I tell myself, this is my food. And she drinks water. I said, like, oh my God. And this is just one story. The poor are all around us, and that's why his heart, this is why he received this gift of healing. God gave it to him because it's for the poor. We, as a little better off, get a few... Uh, bonus uh, healings, but it's really meant for the poor, and this is what he's what he's about, and what he what he lives for. Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, you do unto me. He lives that. 
He knows that when he helps the poor, he's helping Jesus himself. And if there's anything he would love to do is that you become even more a part of this great mission that we're doing. Not all of us can be on the front lines. He's already starting another project close to, again, a new one yesterday. We went to somewhere in Boyatas. We have a piece of land we're going to develop now. Uh, Pope Francis Center for the Poor. We're going to build a playground for all the kids because there's nowhere for them to play in this very small area. He's like I'm already tired with all the things we're doing. He's just still. He, 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 I don't know he, where he gets his energy, but he, as everybody says, but he's being inspired by God, and he's an inspiration for all of us. He's an inspiration. He's an inspiration for me. Even these priests. Look, how we can get twelve priests out on a, uh, or eleven on a Sunday morning? Only God can do that. So I know there's one and one bishop, of course. He's more than a bishop. Of course, Bishop Alan from all this way from Sulu. He, he asked for you. I'll say please pray for Bishop Alan too. He's a, he's a fighter. He's our he's a big blessing for our new community of seminarians. If it wasn't for him, oh my goodness, we wouldn't be where we are. We owe everything to Bishop Alan. He's really, as he said, living with the poor. He loves the poor. He hears the stories. He cries about the poor and the stories he hears about how they are. Others now appointed. He's the vicar for all the Mungians now in all of Mindoro. In Percy Cape. Praise the Lord. So I don't know what that will be. Hopefully he won't have to change his outfit. Father Fernando. So... Uh, you don't have to become a monk in, but you can at least help. <laughs> but this is, uh, we're so blessed. And we ask for your prayers. Again, you're our family. The people, you all said yes. Why? Because Father Fernando is able to touch. I know all of your hearts in some way. It's not him. It's not him, but it's God working through him. Who touched your heart and you're saying, I want to be a part of this. I want to support this. And your presence here is... is I know so much joy for all of us to see you here and, uh, and uh, family that prays together stays together. So we ask you to please pray. Keep praying for all of us. Pray for Father Fernando, the community of priests and seminarians, all our priests who are helping us. They're all, literally all of them are helping in some way with our mission. That's why they're here. Didn't plan it, they just came. There's so many other supporters, I won't mention them all, who've been helping us, and we thank you. So we're on a great mission. The Lord has got something great to do. This isn't the end. This isn't the, the, a funeral celebration. This is the beginning of something new, something more. Father will have his 13th, 14th, and 15th anniversary. So we'll wait for that again. But there's more. There's so much more for us to do. So we praise God. So that's the end of my one-minute speech. <laughs> praise the Lord. I was reminded by the bishop to be faithful for one to one minute uh, sharing. Um, representing my brother seminarians here, it's uh, really a privilege to be able to share with you um, the highlights of what we have gone through so far as uh, young missionaries of Mary Mother of the Poor. Every now and then, I would always tell myself that it's really a privilege, more than just a blessing. It's really a privilege to be able to share the lives of the missionaries in Mindoro. And the inspiration that the, our bishop has been giving us, the simplicity, the humility, and uh, the blessing, the paternal blessing, and the fatherly love and care that he has been giving giving us. And every time we would go to, to, uh, to San Jose, to the vicariate, to the house of the bishop, he would always give us the reminder to be, open, to be able to focus on Christ. Earlier when we kneel down in front of him, what did he say to us? What he said to us? He said, focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Focus on the mission. And I guess it speaks a lot for our mission as missionaries of Mary Mother of the Poor. Father Fernando has gone through a lot of things. And I myself would attest that 
even a single seminarian would, would not, would, cannot afford to say that he has not gone through a lot of things already, even if he has just joined the community just yesterday or just last week. Because every time Father Fernando would speak about the mission and the tribulations that he has gone through, it is really the mission that we are embracing. And your presence is an affirmation that what we are doing is right and blessed by God. So at, that part, at this particular instance, I would like to thank you all, our bishop, our father, our inspiration, and of course, my fellow brothers who are very, very patient in, uh, in loving and understanding with one another. And uh, for Father Fernando and Father Jeff, who have been very, very faithful in their ministries as formators for the Brothers Seminars. Thank you. Sabi ni Bishop, magsalita ka pa, gusto pa nila. Sabi ko, kutom na yung mga yan, kaya nakalang. <laughs> anyway, I just want to thank you all. Um, we have newsletters, so you know, uh, through our newsletters, what we are doing, napakarami po namin projects, as what Father Jeff mentioned. Um, yung Hungry Pope Francis allows me to, and confirms me, Kala na nun, ano, natuwa siya sa mga picture ng aming feeding program. Nandito po si Father Kudoy ng Congregation of the Mission together with Father Roland sa mga Vincentian Priest. Ipinigay po sa amin ang 8,500 square meters sa payatas at yun po ang aming gagawin. Center for the Poor. Diyan po kung magkakaroon ng feeding program. Nagawa po kami ng park dahil po mahilig po ako sa tennis. Sabi ko, lagyan natin ng tennis court, basketball court, playgrounds, tapos sa uh, seminars and chapels. So, dito po ang aming puso at kayo ay alam ko, alam ko one thing I've learned being with you, rich and poor alike, we have this heart to love. Let's do it. And this is will bring us where we belong. These poor people will be the instruments of God to go to heaven. Let us be thankful for this day and age, for God is allowing and giving us a chance to be a better person, to be a holy person, to help the poor. So, we start po kami ng Center for the Poor. Sana, you are with me. Tulungan nyo kami. Madali lang yan. Kaya natin dahil nasa atin ang Panginoon. Salamat po sa inyong lahat. Sa BMCI, ang Panginoon ng aming center, at ang aming seminary, sa Ibing. Salamat, Kuya Bing, Mr. David, Ms. Konsundi, sa lahat. At sa lahat na, sa inyong lahat. Salamat na maraming marami sa mga pare. Salamat po. Glenda, thank you. Tita Donnie, you to mention a few. Send your phone to me. Sonia, Tessie, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I'm going to go to the next one.